Hey adventurers and welcome back to Tower TV. I'm Wyatt and we are here with a beginner's guide to miniature painting. In the video that follows we will be covering some of the basics as well as some of the tips and tricks for getting you started. But first you will need some brushes. I will be using the beginner's hobby set from Army Painter for this video. And we will also be covering some of the goodies like the wet palette also from Army Painter. And so this is going to be the wet palette that I always use and recommend to customers whenever they come in store. And featured inside this little kit you see in front of you are two hydro foams, 50 hydro sheets, a little bottom board, a brush holder, and the lid to keep your paints nice and fresh when you start painting. Next we will be having the little carry case. For this video I will specifically be using the Citadel paint line and this is a whole box made just for all your Citadel little paint pots. And depending on the project you might even need some primer. Pictured above is going to be the Citadel primer. And Primer's main job is basically just to hold the paint, and it will be needed for any games that have grayscale models like Monster Apocalypse, Bolt Action, Malifo, and even Warhammer, because there is a lot of Warhammer. But for this particular video, we'll actually be using a Nolzer's miniature, and Nolzer's minis, as well as Bones minis, are already primed and ready for painting right outside the box. Whether it be a little hero, a monster, a bigger monster, or even the big boat. It's a magic boat and I love it dearly. But moving on, let's go ahead and have straight into it. This is what a general rack of Citadel paints are gonna look like. And these are what we will be using. But let's just hop straight into it with the Army Panner Wet Palette. And so right here is gonna see the full top part and that is actually the three brushes we'll be using and the little brush holder with some spots for extras if need be. And this is what the actual wet palette will look like. Those are three paints I used for my last paint session. Still ready to go. And this is the full Citadel carrying case. Just gonna pop it open and you'll see the two trays that are for all of your base paints, your layer paints, and a few of the other ones. But beneath it is actually even more storage for when you have all of your technicals and some of your larger pots that won't be able to fit on the top rack. And you'll even be able to see the little legs in the top left hand corner that you could use to make little stands out of your uh, trays. And to add to your setup will be a little pot of water to keep your brushes nice and wet and so they don't dry out, as well as a paper towel to help dry off and clean your brushes. And this is the miniature we will be using. This is going to be our Tiefling Sorcerer for the day. There is some transparent magic on there that we'll be able to tackle in this video, as well as the horns that I'm going to want to have a green color. The cloak I'm going to want to have is a nice brilliant red, and for his tail and skin, I'm going to have those be a neat little purple. And so let's get straight to it with Corn Red being the first base paint we are going to start out with. So base paints are kind of your first layer when you actually get to it, and we'll be using our standard brush. And so when you actually get some of the paint out of the pot, you'll actually want to use your wet palette to thin out your paints to make sure they don't get too much on the miniature, because you can always add more, it's a lot harder to take some off. And when you begin to apply paint to the miniature, straight strokes are the way to go, just to make sure you don't bend any of the bristles or put too much paint in a single spot on the miniature. And when you start covering a bit of a wider area like the cloak that we're going to have here, you may notice there will be some lines from where you can see the brush actually leave behind some of the paint in a certain pattern. Don't worry too much about these as we will get back to them later on in the video. And be sure to maintain just having straight strokes as best you can as you get to a lot of those hard to reach places inside the cloak, under the tail, or all those features as well as having your handy dandy paper towel nearby to wipe off your brush whenever you wash it. Since something to look out for will be droplets of water left over on your brush and if those do stick around they will water down your paint. And now that we've finished with the bottom part of the clip, we'll actually start working on the top. And this may become a little bit tricky as there are other features out there like a shirt and a belt that is actually holding everything together. Don't worry too much about some of your paint getting in other places that you want to have a different color as we'll go back over those later with the paint that's indented.
And now that we finished that layer, we'll start working on the boots, gloves, and pants. We'll have Rhinox Hide serving for the darker brown for the boots and gloves. And then we'll have Deathcore Drab being the khaki that we're going to use for the pants. And these will just be serving as the base layer. And so if your uh, miniature has any greaves or laces on the boots that you would like a different color, we'll be able to get back to those after the paint dries on this first layer. And while that's drying, we can go ahead and get our fine detail brush and Abaddon Black and start going over all of the belts that are still going to be over top of the coat. And for a really cool purple flesh tone, let's use some Nagaroth Knight. Now since the miniature comes pre-primed, it may not have the best time having some of the details poked forward through the base layer. However, that won't be too much of an issue as we will be using a wash later on to help bring out some of those details. My hand does slip a little bit right here when I start adding some paint to the face and it does get a little bit on the white shirt, but that won't be too much of an issue when we actually start to doing some of the touch-ups. And now that we've got the face done, let's start adding some Death World Forest to get a really nice green contrast on the horns. And while this isn't a contrast paint, it is really nice to see some nice colors when you actually do put a miniature on the table because it's something you notice from a pretty decent ways away. And as we start going over and doing touch-ups of the miniature, like right here I'm doing some extra work on the red cloak, if you would like a different method of actually getting some of the spots that you may have missed, there is the contrast paints that we'll be getting to later in the video that are more liquid and will have a better time reaching some of these spots. Alright, now let's put some brown on those gloves to make it actually look like they are made of leather. And for that buckle on his shirt, let's add what is called a metallic paint. This is Screaming Bell, which will almost be like a reddish bronze kind of color. And the miniature is very compact, and so reaching it might be a little bit tough. But as for having something ready for the tabletop and ready for the game, this will do just fine. And to touch up on that shirt, let's add some White Scar, which is a thinned out white paint to cover it up and make it look more like a shirt. And now for the famous Non Oil. Non Oil is what is called a shade paint, and shade paints are meant to be a kind of very uh, loosened pigment that is meant to kind of drip down into the recesses of the miniature and bring out some of the details. Tesseract Glow is a technical that we'll be using for the magic, Blood Angels Red will be for the cape, Apothecary White is for the hair, while Cyborg Brown is what we'll be using for the leather of the gloves. For this, we'll be going back to our standard brush. And so first, let's get that Apothecary White on the hair. While Apothecary White is called a white, it does have tones of gray in it to make it actually look like light is hitting that surface and adding that different, well, contrast. Blood Angels Red is what I was referencing to earlier when I was talking about how to get those hard to reach places. 
It's also one of my favorite tools for adding depth to cloth. And so as the paint begins to drip down and actually find the place where it's going to settle, it'll actually make it look like there are different depths to the mini. And it's very good for cloth and very different skin tones if you have one of those contrast paints on hand. And if nothing else, it is your absolute best friend for getting inside some of those hard to reach capes. Also note though that it would be best if you had a contrast paint that would match whatever main color you were using, reds with reds, purples with purples, blues with blues, and so on and so forth. And now I'll be using the Sigour Brown Contrast for much of the same trick on the gloves and the boots. As the boots have laces on them and the gloves have the different finger spots, it may be a little bit rough to actually use your base paint to go through it, but since the contrast is a lot more liquidy, it has a much better time getting down into the recesses and collecting, giving it the illusion that there is more light hitting the surface of the glove instead of the inside. And now for the Tesseract Glow, which is by far one of my favorites. The Tesseract Glow is a technical, and so it's kind of meant to be for special effects. And since it has that nice neon green kind of aesthetic to it, we'll be using it for the magic. For those little transparent or translucent pieces that are on a lot of the Nolzer's minis for magic users, you don't want to use a contrast or a base paint as those will make it completely opaque. And I'll be using the Nuln Oil to actually go back on the face and tail, and so that way the Nuln Oil is able to get into the recesses and into some of the cracks of the mini to bring out some of the features that may have been a little bit hidden with the base layer. And now that a lot of the body is done, let's move on to the base. Citadel has a lot of really nice paints for actually getting into the base, and so this is Agrelin Badlands. So when you actually open the pot, it'll look almost like a putty or a paste, but when you actually put your brush in it, you'll notice that it's very malleable. And so you'll pretty much want to get a decent bit onto your brush, and then basically just put it onto the base and start moving it around. If you do actually have enough kind of like glooping into a single place, don't worry too much as the paint is still wet, a little bit of water will help you easily wash it off and then you'll just make the boots look dirty, which is easy enough. And then with this little bit of Agrax Earth Shade after the base has dried, you can definitely give it a much darker tone, make it look more muddy as opposed to more deserty, but that is completely up to personal preference. And just like that, we have an entirely complete and ready to adventure Tiefling Sorcerer. You'll be able to see a lot more of the depth of what I was talking about for the contrast paints over top of the cloth. It's a really nice effect for actually getting down and making it look like it's nice and wavy, which is really nice for a lot of the capes because D&D has a lot of capes. And the magic you'll still be able to see through as it is supposed to be a mystical kind of effect. You can't really see the face too well, but it's there, I promise. And you can also see that darker brown for the base. But now that we're complete, all products featured in this video are available for sale at towerofgames.com and will be linked in the description down below. And you can also explore even more of our ranges, there is a lot more to go through. As well as this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, Tower 2 in Newport News is having an anniversary sale for its grand opening. For the 14th and 15th, double stamps on qualifying purchases as well as giveaways on the Tower of Games Newport News Facebook page. Tune in and maybe get some good old stuff for you and your family. As well as on this video, please comment and subscribe down below to keep in touch with us and to keep up to date with everything that's happening, and let us know your thoughts. Did I miss anything? Are there any cool paints, painting tips and tricks you found out in your hobbying? Or is there just anything else you think would be a good idea to see? Let us know what you want to see and we'll be happy to see you guys next time.